Welcome back to Model Engineers Laser. My name is Holly and this is part three of our series of Building Jack. Um, full disclaimer, like our other videos, this is not a professional video. There are dogs and children walking around, but hopefully they won't cause too much of a distraction. This video is slightly different to our other videos because the work I'm doing today isn't actually contributing anything to the build of my loco. Uh, this is because I want to go through with you the conversion kit. Let's move that out of your way. The conversion kit that we have available if you wanted to build Jack and use the frames that came with your roundhouse kit rather than purchasing the pre-welded kit from ourselves. So I'll just quickly go through what you get in your conversion kit. So the first thing you get is the front running board. It's an instruction on how to make this in the magazine. This is the only way you'd buy it is with the conversion kit. On the pre-welded kit, it's already part of it. This is the rear running board. Again, with the pre-welded kit, if you've seen the other videos, you would have seen that already in place. Um, these are um, just some extension pieces for the frames. The frames that you get with Roundhouse aren't the full size. They are slightly short. So when we put our buffers on and add our extra bits, they end up a little bit shy. So these are just to fill that gap, but you'll see these come into play later. And you also get your front and rear buffers. Um, in the kit that you get from Roundhouse, which you get these three because they're designed for a different engine. So they're for Billy, Katie and George. And that's the box falling off, sorry. Um, these are the different shape buffers for the different engines. Now, I would say the closest one in the kit is actually these, but the instructions in the magazine tell you how to make these and then the size holes to drill and then all of the holes for the rivets when we just do it already pre-done in the kit. So these are actually all redundant. So we can throw those ones out of the way. Um, so that's the conversion kit that will enable you to convert these frames into suitable frames for Jack. There is a bit of work to be done before you can just follow the instructions that you get with Roundhouse. We've talked about Roundhouse kits before. Their instructions are very clear and very easy to follow. But before we do, these need some slight adaptations. The magazine article first says about removing the springs. So you need to cut them off through here. I'm not going to do this on this video because like I said, I'm not actually going to use these frames. It's just a demonstration piece for you guys to see what you need to do. Um, and this section's purely cosmetic. So it asks you to remove the springs at these three points here and marking the middle sections here because you're going to drill some holes and drop the springs behind if you want to, to bolt them on so they sit behind and just slightly proud. So you sort of see, you kind of get that sort of effect, but in the right place, they need to be in line with your axle boxes. So they actually sit kind of like that behind. Um, again, that is purely cosmetic. Um, you can just take them off, you can put them on. It's up to you what you want to do in the article. If I can show you here, this is, the magazine article so it, it shows you very clearly that you need to cut them off with a fine hacksaw or mark in the centers because you're going to drill holes through and bolt them to sit just there um, the instructions are pretty clear you don't need me to do that and I, I don't intend to so assuming that I've taken the springs off and done what I need to you also need to assume that the bushes are still there and they haven't been stolen um, for my actual engine that I'm building the next thing to do is get a poor man's marking fluid and mark out roughly where we're going to take out the section here for our rear foot plate. Now, the dimensions are in the magazine. There are two holes here that don't have a full set of dimensions on them, but some lunch of the website have got additional dimensions on there. So we'll refer to those as well when we mark them out. So I've just roughly marked where I'm going to be cutting out. And then I've got my scoring tool here. Uh, I'm gonna measure that to six. I've already measured that to six mil. And then run it along the 
the edge there to give me a not very clear line. I'm not pushing hard enough, obviously. There we go. You see my nice, perfectly parallel score line there. So that's where I need to cut there. And while that measurement is set at the right one to make sure they're parallel and it's not moved, I'm going to do the same on this one. Okay. Just run off the end there. Perfect. And then the next dimension is going to be 72 mil. trying to do these things and actually get it on camera as well so you can see what I do and I'm feeling really stupid not being able to do it and look at the camera make sure you guys can see and make sure oh look at that perfect and then I'm going to do the same here run that edge along there so I've got my nice this is why I've used the marker pen I haven't quite got the right space there. Okay. Bad ink drop. Okay. Perfect. I've got that wonderfully marked out, ready for me to hack that out. And then I'm just going to have a look at the dimensions because we need these extra holes drilling in at the back piece one that matches the drawing it might be easier for you to to see so because we're taking those holes out we need to add some extra holes in so this one now is so it's covering up the original dimensions that she needs so that's six from the top and then from the new line down is 3.2 so if I do one that's 9.2 mils down and that is my next row of holes that need to be drilled 9.2 is not going to be that precise using this method It's going to be near enough. There. So my second row of holes needs more marker pen. I told you this was on a professional video before, didn't I? You're going to see all the eyes coming. Only one about there. And some about there as well. And then the same on this one. About here somewhere. And then there's a couple more there. So now we've marked out the second line here to be cut out, we need to put in the dimensions of this line here to know where to cut. Helpfully, it's not in the original article, but it has been published in the corrected article. So we know that is going to be 3.2 mil away from that edge there, which we haven't actually cut yet, but we know it's 72. Um, 17 millimeters from this end here, so we just need to add 3.2 onto it. So it's going to be 75.2. So, okay, Yeah. And 
we need to do the same for this hole here. Sixteen mil. Don't know what I've done with the roll then. That's an awful mark, isn't it? Come on, I'm going to do that again. That's better. Wonderful. So that's that one. And then also. On this drawing which is not on this one are these two extra holes here ah also no dimensions so now you need to get the other piece of paper with the amendments on that tells you these dimensions helpfully they help helpfully they work them out backwards so they've gone 11 mil from where we've cut out the section here that we are yet to cut out um, I just think it's going to be easy to do it all together. We know that's 72 millimeter there. We need to take 11 off. So we know that's going to be 61 millimeters. Right. We're going to work out how deep it is first, haven't we? Before we mark that, because we haven't done the straight line. So that is two millimeters from that section there. That's been cut out. And we know from the original drawing there that we cut out six millimeter. So, six plus six is eight. Did work in a bank. I can do maths. Eight. And I'm not going to sort of sit. Make it a line there. One of the reasons of not doing that bottom line for these larger holes all the way across because it is literally like just over a mil difference in length so depending on how good your marking is if you've got lots of lines there you might start getting yourself confused so by only just doing a little short line there you're not going to get these lines confused in cross sections so now i've got that distance marked in, I can get these in. So like we said, we know that's 72 millimeter. We need to take 11 mil off that. So that's gonna be our 61. So close. There we go. Going on with this one. There we go. And then again, we need to work it back. So that's 72 minus 11 is our 61. And then we've got minus again 14.5 of that. That gives us 46.5. There's quite a few scratches on that one as well, so I'm just going to colour in the scratches 
so by the time I get down to the drill, I don't go, mm, which line is that? Because that is something I'm likely to do. There we go. And that is now ready for drilling. I shall be back. Okay, just a quick one. Now I've drilled the holes. So it does tell you on here that this is a 8BA for those two little holes. And it, oh, there it is. On this one, it does tell you that it's 6BA for the two larger holes. So I just thought I'd show you so the holes that were already there. And it added extra holes before I chop out this section here. There we go. I'm going to chop that bit out now. There we go. And that's that section cut out there. Let me show you on a close up on this one. So these are the holes that we drilled earlier. And then we've taken that section out there. Oh, I've got a camera over there. There we go. I clearly underestimated how long this process was going to take for the building of the frames, thinking I might get it all done in one video and looking at how long this video is already. I think we're going to pause it here now and on our next video we'll look at putting the frames together um, and looking at the buffer beams and doing some riveting as well. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get the updates when the next videos are live and we'll see you next time. Thank you.